tries to get physical again, just in no man's nope. land. Nope. Twice rejected by Wen Min Yama. All right, man. I'm going to be blunt here. This is not good. And I already know what some of you are thinking. How can this not be good? Look at what he's doing. I don't mean it in that way. I mean that this is not good for the rest of us. Because not even 50 games into his rookie season, Victor Wimbanyama is already doing things that a lot of people thought would take him a couple seasons to start doing. And he has already given us more than a handful of plays that we have never seen before from anybody in the history of this game. Before the season started, I made a video about Victor Wembanyama in his preseason games, and I was basically just breaking down plays and pretty much saying that if this is what he already looks like in preseason, then imagine what he could look like after a couple years of experience. Here we are, 48 games into his rookie season, and he is already showing us just a glimpse of what's to come. We'll start with the offensive side of things, because a lot of the reason why he was so hype coming into the NBA and really a few years even before he was drafted was because of his ability to do things that you might see from a wing or a guard at his incredible height of seven foot four and incredible wingspan of eight feet. You don't see guys above seven feet handling the ball like this. You don't see guys at this size taking these types of shots. And yet that's exactly what he was doing. But even then, some people still had their doubts about how well his offensive talent would be able to translate to the NBA. Well, here we are. And I don't think that there are any doubts anymore. He's currently averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, shooting 47% from the field, 32% from 3, although it is worth noting that he has been picking up his 3-point shot recently. As in his last 20 games, he is shooting 36% from 3, and in his last 10 games, he is shooting almost 42% from 3 on just under 5 attempts a game. And it has been pretty hilarious just to see him play basketball because you can pretty much see like in real time how much trouble a lot of these dudes are having literally just to guard him because when a dude can just do this and you're already seven feet tall and jumping at him what the hell else are you supposed to do i mean the, the alternative of course will be prevent him from getting there in the first place but that's about all teams have been able to do so far or just hoping that he misses which he has had his share of games this season where he's just hasn't been able to hit a shot but but they haven't really been that prevalent given how easily he can get to the rim and just the amount of lobs that he can catch because he is just taller than everyone and just tell them to throw it somewhere where nobody else can reach it. Even earlier this season, when he had a stretch of games where he was on a minute restriction and he was really only playing about 23, 24 minutes a game, he was still putting up 21 points and eight rebounds in that stretch. One of those games included a triple double against the Detroit Pistons where he had 16 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. This was his first of two triple doubles this season so far. The second one we will get to later, but as of right now, Victor Wembanyama is currently averaging the 10th most points by any rookie in the last 30 seasons. And by the way, a lot of those names ahead of him are current or future Hall of Famers. Allen Iverson, Luka Doncic, Tim Duncan, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, just to name a few. And then you also have some very good scorers from the last few seasons, such as Donovan Mitchell and Zion Williamson. And realistically, this point total should be even higher, but unfortunately the Spurs took 30 games to figure out that Jeremy Sohan at point guard was not the way to go. And as of recently, Trey Jones has been taking over more of the point guard responsibilities as he should be, and Victor has been getting a lot more lobs and quality looks overall. But offensively, this is very scary <laughs> and it only took half a season. But the real part that is terrifying about this this dude being on the floor is his impact on the other end. I, I said this in the video that I made a couple months ago. I said that there was a very real possibility that we could have a rookie winning defensive player of the year. And while that wasn't really an unpopular take at the time, it is now pretty much impossible. But it's not really his fault. It's just that the team around him is so trash. I mean, that pretty much eliminates him from any sort of 
meaningful end season award and that award is probably gonna go to rudy gobert rightfully so because he has been incredible for the timberwolves this season but just the fact that that's even the conversation that we're having right now is the entire point here in terms of impact at the rim among players with more than 1000 minutes played so far he is currently 10th in defended field goal percentage of attempts at the rim teams are shooting 53.1 percent against him whenever they take a shot at the rim with him as the primary defender just for context that puts him around a lot of other elite rim protectors around the league like isaiah hartenstein brooke lopez isaiah stewart chet holmgren anthony davis and jared allen but his impact goes beyond just his shots defended at the rim as a team the san antonio spurs are completely different with him on the floor versus off the floor the spurs so far this season have a 112.3 defensive rating with him on the floor and that falls to a 120.2 with him off the floor which for context their defense with him on the floor would put them around the top five in the league in defense with him off the floor they would fall all the way to 29th but this recent stretch of games has been very special as in the last 10 games the spurs are a 106 defensive rating with him on the floor and 119 with him off according to cleaning the glass opposing teams are scoring 10 less points per 100 possessions whenever victor Wembanyama is on the floor which is 98th percentile teams are also shooting two and a half percent worse on their effective field goal percentage with him on the floor which is 86 percentile he is already one of the most impactful defensive players in the nba and he's only played half a season but the real crazy part is when you see this defense in action because watching teams trying to figure out how to get around this dude at the rim is one of the funniest things that i've seen so far this season the amount of layups and floaters of shots around the rim that teams have passed up that by the way they normally wouldn't pass up but do just because he's down there has been ridiculous to see and that brings us to victor Wembanyama's most recent game and most recent triple double in which he put up 27 points 14 rebounds five assists two steals and 10 blocks yep 10 blocks this made him the first player in over three years to have 10 blocks in a game and it made him the first rookie to block 10 shots in a game since i promise you guys are not ready for this answer since josh smith in 2004 and just another thing to note of the eight rookies that have had 10 or more blocks in a single game none of them hit a three-pointer and in terms of offense victor's 27 points in that game is tied for the second most points for a rookie that had 10 blocks in the game tied with david robinson in 1990 and trailing only ralph sampson's 28.13 block performance in 1983 but as i said before some of his defensive possessions you literally just have to see them to actually comprehend what you're looking at now the raptors were honestly pretty disadvantaged from the start given that yaka Pertle is not a shooter so victor is just free to roam around inside the three-point line this is pretty much a nightmare scenario for any team trying to attack him they start off with a pick and roll with gary trent and scotty barnes which then breaks down to an action involving yaka Pertle. but as you can see victor Wembanyama is just free to drop and roam on defense because he knows that Jakob Pertl is not going to be able to shoot this. So Trey Jones is able to get back and now Jakob is just making a decision to attack Victor Wembanyama. Block one. This play right here, same thing, out of bounds. They're running in action with RJ Barrett and Jakob Pertl this time, but as you can see, Victor has no interest in guarding Jakob <laughs> in this action and is instead worried about RJ Barrett who has beaten Champagny backdoor and he is able to easily recover. Block two. And I'd have to imagine this play is probably one of the most frustrating things that players face when going up against him is the fact that even when he gets out rebounded and even if he's out of position and you beat him to the shot attempt he can still just jump late and still get a hand on it block three this play right here same thing they're running double drag which Jakob slips and starts rolling to the rim but Toronto is in such a difficult position right here because I mean you're not going to throw this ball up to Jakob when Victor is standing right there and he can literally reach outside the paint almost and get a hand on that so that's a bounce pass into Jakob he again beats Victor to the shot attempt there's a block for Wemby. block four so this next play starts with RJ Barrett and Sky 
Mighty Barnes two-man game, which Victor Wemanyama is dropping off of Jakob, who is still at the logo for some reason. And so he's able to just completely shut all of this down. And then this play pretty much just dissolves into a Jakob Hurdle post up against Victor Wembenyama somehow. Block five. This play, Scotty Barnes has Victor Wembenyama on a switch, but as teams have figured out throughout the first half or so of the season, that's not really an advantage creating situation because he is just as mobile as any wing or any guard in the NBA. So he tries to break him down, and realistically, this probably should have been a pass to Emmanuel quickly for a three, but he instead tries to take it up against Victor Wembenyama. Tries to get physical again, just in no man's no, land. No. Twice. Block six and seven. This play a little bit later in the game is just a testament to the type of shots that he's actually able to alter. Fast break opportunity, basically a three on two, because I mean, Grady Dick is out of the play at this point. Victor Wemanyama shouldn't be in the play realistically, but as you'll see, they give it to Scotty Barnes, who then hands the ball off to O'Shea, but Keldon Johnson is actually able to alter the shot slightly, who forces him to kind of take this weird double clutch type of layup, and that allows Victor to get back into the play. Block eight, this next play, they try a, a pick and roll slip with Scotty Barnes. Bruce Brown is a pretty quality passer, so he's able to get this pass through. He gets Blake Wesley, the help defender with the fake, and has a wide open dunk. Scotty Barnes rolling to the pocket. Oh, Victor got back and blocked that one! Block nine. And this play is one of the funniest that I've ever seen because Grady Dick has everybody beat, but he is so terrified of what Victor Wembanyama is about to do to him that he actually forgets how to shoot a layup. For some reason, he tries to go back up with it because, I mean, when someone basically jumps at the ball like that, they're usually out of position, but this is not a regular person that we're talking about here block 10. And those 10 blocks brought his total for the season up to 153. As of right now, he is currently averaging 3.2 blocks per game, which leads the NBA. Not leads rookies, leads the NBA. He is currently the only player currently averaging three or more blocks. The next highest being Walker Kessler at 2.8 and Brooke Lopez at 2.7. This is not normal. Like this, this is not okay. And as I said, the Spurs are terrible. Like, th th there's no other way to describe it. I tried to find a different word to describe it, but no, they are trash. And keep in mind, he really hasn't even been playing that much. He's playing 28 minutes a game. He's missed a handful of games on top of that. And this is what his first year production already looks like. As soon as the Spurs are able to build a competent team around this dude, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what the NBA is going to do. His one flaw that he's shown all season is his turnovers because he has been throwing a lot of questionable passes. But I feel like that's just something that's going to improve as he gets more time in the league. I don't know what we're going to do with this guy when that time comes. This is already bad and it's only going to get worse. But we will see when that time comes. If you want to hear me talk about other young players in the league, I made this video about Jonathan Kaminga a couple weeks ago, and so if you're interested, you can go and check that out right here. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new, hit the bell to be notified when I upload, comment down below what you want to see next, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.